Well, everybody, it's official. We are going to Mysteria in the next set, and boy, does this look intriguing, interesting. And we've already got some really spicy hot takes that people are putting out there in the old uh, social media sphere. So let's break down this brand new set. Part the Mist Veil is the introduction, well, sort of reintroduction, I guess you can say, to the realm or the uh, land, the region, if you will, of Mysteria. And Mysteria is sort of tucked off on the side of the uh, world map uh, towards the east and is surrounded by a thick mist. And the realm itself and the land is very inhospitable, very hard to traverse, but it's also home to a people who have adapted to it and are uh, very adept and nimble at uh, you know managing their way in this inhospitable land and uh, it's a really cool timing because this set will also be introducing japan to the game in earnest because this set will be releasing in japanese as well as other languages around the world and not only that they are having a world premiere as i'm sure you've heard already and a calling tokyo from May 17th to 19th, a week after my birthday, they're having this giant event. And uh, it is, wow, it's, that's just like a surreal statement to finally see uh, Japan enter the fold. APAC is starting to slowly become uh, sort of uh, welcomed into flesh and blood uh, with the release in like uh, South Korea and uh, other regions in APAC over the past years. Uh, but now it's Japan's turn and that is a huge, big, exciting deal. For flesh and blood so there's info here but I want to go and break down a few of the uh, little hidden tidbits that you might not have seen as well as show you some stuff uh, that they hint at and harken back to in the old lore book so let's dive through this part first and then we'll jump into it this set is going to release May 31st of this year and part the mist veil marks the long-awaited rival of a new talent a new talent listen carefully it's a new talent. That means it's not going to be, you know, one of the elemental talents that we've seen before. So if you're thinking lightning, it's not going to be lightning. Uh, it very well could be water. There's a lot of water type elements and uh, perhaps uh, talents, we could call it now, uh, within the uh, art of the... Uh, cards that we see like related to ninja already like uh, rushing river and torrent of tempo stuff like that right so this could be a water-based talent some people are speculating that could be mist um, i think the coolest way to call something like that that kind of encompasses fast movement uh, like a tempest style like raging storm is just the word storm storm ninja how does that not seem like the coolest thing like for a talent is storm and you can like really like jump off of many things so if i had to put money down i think storm is pretty good i wouldn't mind putting money down on storm but it's unlike anything wraith has ever seen before that could be hyperbolic it could be very similar to something in the past but i'm gonna take them at their word uh because uh, why not they are lss is doing a fantastic job but uh, if it's unlike anything we've seen before, I, I'm sure there's some interesting things that they could do. And there's, of course, the possibility of multiple classes within the set. It doesn't have to be a mechanologist-only set type thing, it, wherein we only have ninjas because only ninjas are part of Mysteria. I think there's a lot of things that hint at multiple classes uh, within the world or the uh, realm of Mysteria already. And then taking it further, of course, uh, there are some little hints that they dropped, which we'll look at here in a moment within this as well. I do want to point this out. Uh, Flesh and Blood creator James White says, For years, passionate TCG players across Japan have patiently waited for Flesh and Blood to be available in their mother tongue. Now, after years of planning, we're incredibly excited to bring Flesh and Blood in, uh, to the motherland of the TCG industry, marking a massive milestone for LSS and the status of Flesh and Blood as a truly global game. Play the game, see the world, play the game in Tokyo. I mean, how do you not want to do that? Tokyo, is, and really Japan in general, is my number one bucket list location to visit in the world. Before I die, I want to see Japan, and not just Tokyo, I want to see the country, the people, the culture, because I fell in love with it as a child, and if there's ever an opportunity for me to go to Japan and play Flesh and Blood, I think that would be a uh, just another watershed beautiful moment, much like I was so incredibly humbled to get to do that with uh, 
perhaps my second like bucket list place, which was New Zealand. Uh, as creator and lead designer from the 13 booster sets we've released since 2019, Part the Mist Veil is the one I'm most proud of. This is a huge statement because we just got, in many and my including my, including me, my opinion, the best set that has ever been released in Flesh and Blood in uh, Heavy Hitters. And uh, to follow this up with Part the Mist Veil, are you kidding me with this? If this actually turns out to be, you know, like obviously in James White's words, the one he's most proud of, another banger set, two in a row, that is definitely looking good for 2024. I'm very happy that this is uh, our best work, um, with our best work yet, that players will celebrate this milestone and welcome our new Japanese fans into the Flesh and Blood community globally. Uh, which is very cool and check this out too they're having a sort of like a welcome event or like lead up to the big event called road to tokyo where you can do these learn to play welcome events and they get early access to the part the mist fail blitz pre-cons that is very very cool and what a great way to onboard an incredibly huge card community uh in japan that's that's incredible that's amazing uh, and so if you're looking to go to Japan and play in the world premiere uh, for the part the Mist Veil vale and Calling Tokyo events, uh, you can go here on this uh, this event. I don't think it's live right now. We can open it and see. Uh, it looks like it's just loading, loading. Does not look like it. Well, we can try to buy tickets. Nope, uh, it is probably not, not yet on sale. Yep, can't buy tickets yet. Uh, so you can buy tickets whenever it's live. And then uh, it looks like it's gonna go live Saturday, February 24th. So this weekend. Uh, Japan Standard Time, maybe tomorrow actually, uh, depending on their time uh, difference. Either way, uh, I looked at flights, it is definitely expensive and it would be a dream come true, but I'm not sure I can swing it, but I would love to if there's ever a possibility and if I could somehow make it work, I definitely would. Now, let's talk about what we might actually see in this set because there's a couple of little hints. First things first, this blurb right here is uh, is pretty telling, perhaps. For 10,000 years, our ancestors have walked the path well-traveled. Like the tiger stalking its prey, they have waited. Now, we don't know who they is. Perhaps it's our ancestors are waiting. Uh, and we can talk a little bit more about that based on some stuff that they put in this book. Like the snake hiding in the murky water, they have waited. And like the waning for faces of the moon, they have waited until now. The truth lies beyond the mist. Now, um, there's a couple of people that have broken this down and are, they are trying to sort of, uh, you know, section each of these off and point to how they could relate to different classes that we could see. And the prevailing theory that a lot of people are sharing is that the tiger stalking its prey is very representative of ninja. We already have ninja and tiger connections within the cards themselves. The snake hiding in the murky waters, there's actually two connections. Well, the main one being that it's uh, it's definitely related to some sort of assassin or the uh, the idea of, you know, subterfuge, assassination, that sort of thing. And that actually is found in here, which we'll look at in a moment. And then like the waning faces of the moon, they have waited. Now, uh, this could mean one of two things. It could mean one illusionist which I actually think is the case, or it could mean wizard because of waning moon, but I don't quite buy that and I instead buy illusionist. So let's break down a couple of uh, possibilities as to why. First, let's get into the lore book because I can't help but wanna look at the lore book. Okay, so if you've never had the opportunity to dive into this lore book, this was actually released alongside of the game and it was sent to stores. Um, LSS was very kind enough to send me one back in 2019 uh, towards the end of 2019 when the game came out and uh, I have had it ever since I opened it. Uh, this was before the game really exploded and this was a very special item to me. I opened it and I read the entire thing multiple times uh, and I love this thing, it is fantastic. This is the world map and this is Mysteria right over here, as you can see. Uh, the War of the Monarchs is currently going on here with Solana, the Demonastery here, floated up, untethered from the world and then it dropped a bunch of bad things on Solana. On the way, it crossed over Volcor, and in fact, in the art of Mavrian Skies, you can actually see Kasai, I believe, standing on a uh, sand dune, looking at the Demonastery float overhead. Uh, Heavy Headers is taking place right there, if you're curious. The pits and metrics are up here from uh, the most recent Mechanologist-themed set. Uh, bright lights. Aria's up here and the uh, veil that uh, shrouds Aria from the world is fading, meaning that people are coming in and trying to fight. 
uh, and to take the resources. Uh, we haven't been to the Savage Lands and uh, pirates exist here. And I don't know if that's the case, but I'm gonna keep saying it until they exist here. So pirates do exist here. And uh, it was at one point mentioned that we don't quite know what lives in these waters, uh, but they even said, well, if you look at the world map, there's some weird stuff going on in there. So we have to explore that at some point. And so maybe it's now, I don't know. But either way, we're in Mysteria over here. And if we go to the Mysteria section, which this book, by the way, is just beautiful. I mean, like, how do you, how do you, this is just incredible. Like LSS, I know that you have a lot going on and you're doing so many fantastically great things. Good Lord, this book is so beautiful. If you just wanted to print another one and then just give it to everyone, it's fantastic. Okay, so if we go into the mysterious section, then we have a couple of little pieces of uh, information that lead us to different things that might exist within this set. First things first, a persistent layer of mist blankets villages across Mysteria, broken only by beams of sunlight streaming through the clouds. Uh, with the dawn, the village stirs as Mysterians rise to their daily tasks. It goes on and talks about kind of like the life, the daily life, farmers tending to hanging gardens, because again, like the entire landscape is incredibly harsh and inhospitable, uh, just jutting out mountains, uh, very deep cliffs. Uh, you have to be very nimble uh, to get around, and that's why, uh, you know, Mysterians are naturally predisposed to, uh, well, be very ninja-like, I guess you can say. Beneath the veil, they follow in the footsteps of their forefathers, the ancestors, uh, working to preserve ancient traditions and to teach each new generation in the way of their ancestors. Over thousands of years, they have developed a unique way of life intrinsic to their environment, encompassing, encompassing excuse me, creative endeavors, practical arts, and martial styles. Now, we come to the next part. From elaborate ceremonies and festivals to their education in the seven arts, of which I believe this article does mention the sacred arts down uh, wherever it does. Look back at the article. You can mention them. Uh, the uh, mention of the sacred arts. Uh, these are the seven arts, we can assume. To the existence of groups such as the Grand Masters Guild and Aoi Scales, which show up in uh, Katsu's uh, lore. So check out Katsu's lore for more information on both of those. Mysteria is deeply rooted in ancient customs and rituals dating back to the beginning of human civilization. So first things first, we know ninjas are going to be part of this set. Duh, it's clear. It's obvious. That's, that's the point. But... This rite of passing and a few pieces of art that I'm going to flash on the screen as I read this are pointing us very strongly to the possibility of illusionist. So, rite of passage. According to legend, the rite of passing is held on the day of the year where the veil between worlds is thinnest. And don't forget, there was another veil between worlds that was broken. It was a mirror and it was shattered by none other than viscerae and it allowed the uh, disciples of pain in the demonastery access into Irathiel, where they then found the Umbra, took, well, didn't take control. They uh, offered their souls in exchange for, uh, you know, Urser and Blasmafet to uh, take over and uh, then start go fighting the uh, Solanians. Nevertheless, the world's uh, veil between the two worlds is the thinnest and the worlds of spirits is closest to the world of the living. I love how it's like there's just a nice little connection there. The rite honors the dead by welcoming the spirits home and inviting them to take part in the celebration. And that is very possibly pictured on multiple cards that we have already from Dynasty and I think also from Everfest as well, but specifically from Dynasty. When night falls, all Mysterians don an ornate ceremonial mask that hides their face from view, mask of momentum, and uh, makes the living indistinguishable from the dead. Lanterns are lit and raised into the sky, floating among the stars, illuminating the dancers below. The celebrations last through the night and do not end until dawn when the spirits return to the realm of the dead. So there are multiple cards that I'm showing right now that depict this exact moment, this exact ceremony, and they are illusionist cards. <laughs> and that is the important thing to note. So there are already, the groundwork has already been laid for illusionists. Count that plus the art of Flicker Trick looking like uh, the main uh, Flicker Trick character whose name eludes me in the moment of recording this. Leave it in a comment below so that I can remember because I'm literally forgetting as I'm saying it starts with an A. Uh, she is dancing out of the way or her illusion is dancing out of the way of what looks like a ninja or at the very least a uh, a fighter or a warrior in, um, you know, like ninja like garb. Uh, so that points me to them being illusionists, perhaps in this set. Now, the other thing, and I, I don't know where it's located in this 
book. Um, we might have to flip around a little bit. Mist Cloak Gully, beautiful piece of art, by the way. Fantastic piece of art. But if we flip through, let's see if we can find where it is talking. Here we go, the seven arts. Uh, if we look through these seven arts, there's actually one of these uh, major arts called the serpent, minor arts, excuse me. And the serpent, the art of the serpent encompasses stealth and assassination techniques. Those who study the art of the serpent are all but invisible, taking down their opponents with deadly precision. So the thought here is that it's mentioned in the blurb at the beginning. Therefore, we could be seeing perhaps the art of the serpent as a connection point for assassins and ninjas. And there's some crossover there because we've already seen that in Outsiders. And there's also lore crossover because Katsu and Benji were both leaving Mysteria where a mysterious plague had started killing off villages and go into the pits, which again, they made this trek. Let's go back to the world map. I know this is the video you all wanted. No one wanted this, but I care. I like the lore. So Benji and, uh, here we go, there we go. Benji and um, Katsu went, left Mysteria, perhaps took this skirted around Solana perhaps, and made their way all the way over to the pits so that when they got here, they could find what they believe is the source of the uh, poison or the toxin that is affecting their villages here. And that is why they are in the pits uh, looking for the source of that. And again, there's connections between assassins and ninjas. But that's not the only connection because there's connection between Mysteria and Volcor as well, as we saw from Dynasty cards representing some things we might be seeing in Mysteria. And just the idea that we could be having illusionist connection as well when Dromai showed up here and Mysteria as well. And it would it would make a nice little connection as well because we also have a light illusionist there in Solana. So we have this nice little connection between three illusionists and three regions that all border each other. So that is a very real possibility that we have those three. But it's not the only thing. We could get some spicy stuff going on because there are a couple of um, other uh, minor arts and I'm gonna to flip to this page. There are a couple of other minor arts that could point us uh, towards some new classes that we haven't seen yet, but we have seen Illusionist, we've seen Ninja. It was said early on in the uh, life cycle of the game that this chart would eventually be completely filled out, that we would get all of these um, all of these classes at some point within the game. And looking at it, we are very close because we have Assassin, Guardian, Brute, we have Wizard, we have Bard, we have Illusionist, we have Ninja, uh, we have Warrior and Ranger. So that only leaves three on this thing. Alchemist. I kind of thought we were going to get that in uh, Outsiders, but we didn't. Necromancer. Well, if we have a spirit wielding um, hero, this could be the moment we get Necromancer and Cleric, which I'm not sure might not pop up in this, but uh, and many more. And one of the many mores that we might see if I can flip back over to it, I think it's right here, is uh, a minor art that's mentioned very briefly. And let's see if we can find it. Uh, right about here, Willow. And this is already represented in the uh, game already because the fourth art, the art of the willow, is the study of tailoring and weaving professions. And uh, well, Fiendal Spring Tunic may be an Aryan garment, or at least it appears to be an Aryan garment, but tailoring and weaving is a minor art that is very heavily studied here. Uh, part of the basic education of all Mysterians. So we could, on the very slight chance, have a connection to a tailor type, uh, either class or maybe even talent, which I think would be absolutely hilarious and cool. Now, secret arts, um, these are not really mentioned in detail, but they are kind of uh, prescribed to the grandmaster of each of the families. So the families each have a secret art that they could pass down or could die with them if they choose not to pass down, uh, which is very cool. Uh, these are more blurbs. If you're curious, you can pause and read about these. All of this, by the way, if you're frustrated that you don't have one of these books, you can't get it. All of these can be found in two places. One, you can find all this information on fabtcg.com. It's just hard to find. And two, legendarystories.net. And if I put that wrong, I'll put it in the, uh, the video description. That has all of the stories. Literally every piece of lore is compartmentalized, organized so that you can digest it in whatever order you want. Holy crap, you gotta go support them. It's incredible. Uh, and yes, you should definitely read the Katsu the Wanderer um, 
story because his story tells a lot about why he's, uh, you know, out and wandering and, uh, you know, what is the importance of his mission. So what do you think about this new set? I, my mind is buzzing with all the possibilities that we could see with this, and uh, I'm still trying to parse it out myself. Let me know in a comment below how you feel about it. Are you excited to play with some ninja? Are you thinking that we're going to get a, a wizard in this set, or do you think it's going to be illusionist, or do you even think that this is just going to be an all ninja set somehow, or are they going to throw us for a loop and include pirates because holy crap look if you're gonna do a ninjas versus pirates or a pirates versus ninja set i will literally buy out the entire stock on tcg player and own everything i will no that would be selfish i wouldn't do that but if you enjoy this type of video make this number go slightly higher and become a patron so that i can make more videos like this uh because these patrons make this channel run uh and i'm super thankful to them as always thanks for watching